Now, for decades, dentists have recommended we should floss once a day. But how useful is flossing? An investigation by the Associated Press suggests there's insufficient proof that it's beneficial. The US Department of Health and Human Services has admitted in a letter that the benefits of flossing had never been properly researched. Well, joining me now is Ben Atkins from the British Dental Association. Do you agree with them? Yes, I do. I think the difficulty we've got is flossing forms part of our oral health program. So we've got to make sure we're cleaning our teeth. And a lot of patients find it really difficult to floss. So as a dentist, we've got to find other reasons and routines and how they can actually keep between their teeth really clean. Well, before you tell me the only way to do that is to go and see your dentist, is there anything we can do? I think there's lots of different things you can do. I think there's, there's little brushes we can use. There's um, things that fire air between your teeth. It depends how big a problem that is in your life. And actually finding out how you are brushing your teeth is, is, is still critical to go and see your dentist, though. What is it about flossing with the right equipment, in your view, that, that helps? What, what are you doing to, to put off the visit to the dentist, perhaps? If you're doing it correctly, you're removing plaque, you're removing bacteria, you're removing food that builds up around your teeth, and that reduces dental decay and it reduces gum disease. A lot of people are going to say, I've spent hours, months, flossing my teeth, spending a lot of money for no point at all. I don't think it's no point. I think it's actually, as you say, the research says there's no conclusive evidence either way. But it's actually coming back to say, look, if you're flossing correctly, you're doing a really good job. But very few of my patients floss correctly. And often, I will, personally, I use other things than floss to clean the majority of my area. But there's just two little places that I can't get anything else in that I use floss for. How do you know if you've got it right? I mean, I don't know, should there be blood? How, does it, how do you tell? Well, there simply shouldn't be blood. So if you're cleaning your teeth and you're not getting, um, if you put a piece of floss in there and you get a bad taste in your mouth afterwards or you get bleeding, you're not doing it correctly. So it's really important to concentrate on getting the techniques correctly. And people presumably have got more teeth than others. They're the ones who need to have a think about how they approach this in future. Absolutely, it's really critical to find what works for you and that you feel comfortable using. Some people haven't got the dexterity to actually use floss, but they, haven't, they have got the dexterity to use, for example, an electric toothbrush, which might do 80 or 90% of the job. It's really important to make sure you're brushing your teeth twice a day for two minutes and keeping your teeth really clean. So it's a balanced use it, using the correct tools for the job in question. That's good. I'm, I'm seeing you waving your hands about. Just show us the action you should be doing uh, if you're flossing correctly. Oh, that would be a good idea to have some floss with me, wouldn't it? Yeah. But it's, it's a sliding motion and rather than a soaring motion. So you're getting your teeth with a, a tight, small... Uh, you'd say you need roughly about two centimetres of floss in between your thumbs to actually get up and, an up and down motion, not a soaring motion. So, but a lot of people aren't dexterous enough to do that.